Now we're solving equations that are quadratic in nature and we're gonna solve them just like we usually do. Here we're gonna use a little sleight of hand, a little pretend if you will. As long as the leading power is twice the middle power then it is quadratic in nature. Why don't we see a few examples. Here I'm up here, this four is twice that two so it's quadratic in nature. So we're gonna go and we're gonna try to solve this thing just as we've done before. We're looking for the factors of four that add to be five. Are there any? Yes, so you gotta get that. You gotta get that four and one. Now here's the trick, see? All right, you can factor them quickly by putting the variable part of the middle term right there and right there, sure. That says the signs are the same and they're both negative, negative. Oh my goodness, the fun ain't done. Look at that, those are both screaming. Difference of squares, yes. X plus one, X minus one. X plus two, X minus two. Uh-huh. Now you use your zero factor property, not once, not twice, but three times, and you're gonna get four answers. And those four answers are X equals minus two, minus one, one, and two. Right. If you're wondering how we got those, you should check out the solving equations. Um, yeah, the first video on this topic. And a flower. Now I'm up here, man. Take a look at that. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, I can see. I can rewrite this. Whoa, don't use that color. We need some separation. Yeah. Um, we'll use, we'll use white on this white one. X to the first power plus X to the one half power. Yeah? Yeah! If we went all rational on our exponents. Yeah, minus two equals nothing. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Is this power twice that one? Indeed it is. One is twice one half. Okay. Now I'm looking for the factors of two that subtract to be one. Are there any? Yes. So you gotta get that. You gotta get that two and one. But wait, we're not done. There we go, right? What am I doing? Little sleight of hand, variable part, right in there. You could have also made a U substitution that would have been beneficial. Okay, yeah, but here we're recognizing the forms. Yes. So then the signs are different and the big one's positive, negative, but we're not done. Here we're actually going to use the zero factor property. And when I do, I get x to the one half minus one is equal to none. Or x to the one half plus two is equal to none. Yes. Okay. So then x the square root of x is equal to 1, sure. So then I square both sides, mm-hmm, and x is going to be 1. Yes, I square this side, and I square that side. Now let's go through and do the same thing over here. Um, the square root of x is equal to a minus 2. Now your spider senses should be tingling on that one, right? That one, you, you can't take the square root of a number and get a negative. But we'll go through the motions anyway. X is equal to four, sure, when I square both sides. But now I need to check it. Sure, so I plug one up in there. One plus one minus two, is that none? Yes, you are a solution. Now here, four plus two minus two is four. That's not zero. You are not a solution. So here, I only have one solution. X is, an X is gonna be one. And a flower. Yes! They're like maracas. Now I'm up here. Oh, sure. Uh oh. What are you gonna do? Yes! Squint your eyes real quick. Oh! Does it look like I have 
something squared and then something to the first power. Is that power twice this one? Yes. So then I'm going to go about it usually. All right. So we have a couple of tricks here. All right. When I'm solving these equations, I have been using factoring because I like factoring. You could also use the quadratic formula and you could complete the square and any other method of your choice. But I'm looking for the factors of 20 that subtract to be 8. Great. That's 10 and 2. Yes. Safe driving practices. Uh-huh. Okay. So then, bam, bam. Here's your 10 and 2. And then that's going to be equal to nothing. Now take a look at this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I'm going to beat the buzzer. Um, this is uh, the variable part, so I'm going to stick it right there. x squared plus 3x. Now this is magic and sleight of hand. You probably should have made a u substitution on this one. And x squared plus 3x. Okay, now that I have that part in here, the signs are different. And the big one's negative. That one's negative, and this one's positive. Haha. <laughs> But wait, there's more. Neither one of those are done. I can go further. Here, I'm looking for the factors of 10 that subtract to be 3. Are there any? Yes. So you got to get that. You got to get that 5 and 2. X and X. See there, we put the X. So it seems mm, not too much of a stretch to be able to just whoosh, do a quick, uh-huh. Um, signs are different. Big one's positive, And then that one's negative. Let's see if this one factors further. Oh, I hope it does. Are there any factors of 2 that add to be 3? Indeed, there are. Bam, bam. Oh, here's your 2. There's your 1. Okay, there's your x. There's your x. Signs are the same, and they're both positive. Positive. Now I'm using my zero factor property once again, and here we go. We're going to find out that x is equal to a minus 5 and a minus 2, and a minus 1, and 2. And yeah. And I think so is this marker.